Hi, I'm Angie. I want to welcome you to National Indoor RV Centers, where we specialize in the sales, storage, service, and detailing of only high-end new and used coaches. So basically, we do it all. Hi, I'm Angie with National Indoor RV Centers and today I'm so excited to show you the 2023 Winnebago View. So today we're going to go over the 24D, um, a really roomy floor plan that has plenty of room for entertainment. This is a great coach that sits on the um, Mercedes Sprinter chassis that gives you lots of options. It's small yet it feels big when you get inside. Like I said, I'll be going over the 24D. Um, that has the Murphy bed, so that's what gives you that extra space inside with that full wall slide on the driver's side. And then there's also two other options, the 24J and the 24V as in Victor. So lots of options. This is the beautiful Bay Mist 2 exterior. You have two other full body paint exteriors and one with just graphics. I want to point out that the View and the Navion are the same coach with different badging. So at some of our National Indoor RV Center locations, you'll be able to purchase the view. At other locations, you'll be able to get the Navion. But basically, they are the same coach with just a different name, both made by Winnebago. The view slash Navion sits on the Mercedes Sprinter chassis. It has the three liter, six cylinder turbo diesel engine and it has 188 horsepower with 325 torque. So the hitch is rated for 5,000 pounds, so you can tow a small vehicle um, if you want to. I think this is small enough that I don't know that I would need to do that, but if you want to take you know, fun toys along, jet skis, um, four-wheelers, you name it, you're going to have no problem towing it. So if you look up top, we've got the Super Shell Sleeper Deck by Winnebago, one-piece fiberglass cab over. Um, so I'll get to show you the inside of that. The great thing about the View or the Navion is that it's very doable for a person to, to, to take for an adventure on their own or if it's just a couple, but you've also got those extra sleeping areas. So if you want to take grandkids or friends, you're going to be surprised at how many options you have with this uh, Class C. So we've got the big windshield. This is what I say. This is why your trip starts as soon as you get behind the wheel because you get to see this beautiful country through that. At the top of the windshield, you've got a camera in there. That's going to help you with some of the safety features that are built in to this chassis. So you have um, active brake assist. You have the um, street sign detection and it will read those for you. And I'll kind of go over those features as we're inside the coach. Then as we come down, we've got the windshield wipers. These are really cool because they are the rain sensing windshield wipers and the water is actually in the blade itself. So they're 25% more um, efficient than our typical, you know, uh, windshield wiper fluid that just sprays up all over the place. So I'll demo those in a little bit too. They're kind of fun. Then as we come down here, we have the nice Mercedes LED high performance headlights. And then just below those, we have the fog lights. These are cornering fog lights. Once you are below 15 miles per hour and you're turning, they will kind of follow the car. So that's really, that's a cool feature. Then right in the center here, we've got a sensor. Again, that's gonna uh, contribute to that uh, active brake assist. And then we've got our step here. So if you need to wash off that beautiful windshield when you get to the campground, which most of you are going to need to do, depending on what time of year and where you're traveling, it could get really dirty. Just step up there and you can get to the center. Then right to the side of that, we've got a little square box here. If you just push in and pull that out, this is where you would thread on a D-ring if you needed to be towed out of somewhere. Um, so the D-ring is actually in at the passenger's feet. So I'll show you that little toolbox when we get to that. So let's check out what's under the hood here. They've got a nice sturdy, heavy duty hood. So over here, this is where the battery, where you would normally see the battery, it's gonna be underneath the driver, um, underneath the driver's feet, basically, right inside the driver's door. And then this is your ground, and the, here's your positive if you ever need to jump the coach. Brake fluid, windshield wiper fluid, air intake for the engine. Then we have our oil fill. Now, Mercedes doesn't send this with an oil dipstick anymore. If you want to get one, you can go to Mercedes and you can source one there. 
Um, you do have a nice readout at the dash, so that's why they don't add it in here. But if you do want to add it, it would go right there. Just take out that plug and that's where you put in the dipstick. Coolant and your air intake for the cab AC. And then right here in front is your DEF. So this is a five gallon tank. DEF is your diesel exhaust fluid. And a couple things to think about. There is a shelf life for DEF. It usually lasts a year. So if you're purchasing it at Walmart where it comes um, in a container, make sure you check that expiration. Also, it doesn't like sunlight or heat. So keep that. A lot of people will ask how far you know a tank of DEF will take you. Typically around 5,000 miles. Um, but always watch that. You're going to have a readout at the dash. And you can keep that a constant readout at the bottom of your screen, which I recommend. If you've ever driven an RV, you know that one of the most important things on it are your exterior mirrors. They're your saving grace, something I always rely on even when I have a camera system. I always look to those mirrors. So you've got uh, power and internally controlled mirrors for the top two thirds and then the bottom you can manually adjust. Marker light and turn signal in the side. So we get the great running board here from Winnebago. Uh, the chassis comes with a running board. They take off what comes standard from Mercedes. They add this. They make this in-house. This is one of the things that I love about Winnebago is that they manufacture so many things that go into this coach. Um, and it's a very strong aluminum. It's e-coated. If you want to learn more about what they do at the factory and all the things they actually manufacture, you can watch my Winnebago factory tour video. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're wanting to do your research. I go way in depth at the factory and you'll be amazed at everything I show, but always impressed with the e-coating. They do, they have their own aluminum extruder, which is pretty impressive. And then I also love how they put the Winnebago in the rubber mat here. You've also seen it at the top of the um, super shell there. And then we've got D rings in the front and the back. So those are great if you want to leave a pet outside and tether the pet to the D rings or if you've got bikes you want to lock up while you're heading out for a hike, that's a great place to do it. Also know that there's a nice big window. Um, it actually opens a little bit. I'll show you when we get up there in the cab overhead bunk. Um, it's really nice that you can get that cross breeze there. All right, check out this really nice door. This is one of the things they don't make, but it's more automotive. It's really strong. I can actually hang on this door and move the whole coach and it's not gonna move. It has really nice heavy duty hinges. So it just doesn't feel like your typical class C door, which I like. Nice strong handlebar here. I also love the window. And the other thing I love about this window is that you've got the cool shades. So you can easily lock out that window. Just so simple. You've got a little storage here. You can make this a little trash can or storage there. I like that because going in and out, just put the trash there, you're all good to go. So really nice. And then there, here's the hinge to unlock it from inside. While we're at it, I'm standing on these nice sturdy. So look, I'm standing on these steps. I'm jumping. Do you hear any creaking, any sound from the steps? They're really nice and strong. Again, it's another item that Winnebago manufactures. They're steel, they're E-coated, they've got the strips on them so you're not going to slip. Um, and while we're talking about steps, you want to keep the steps on when you're in travel mode. So when they're on, that means they're going to close in when you shut the door and they're going to come out when you open the door. So for travel mode, you want that. Once you're at the campground, make sure you turn the steps off because you don't want them to endlessly go in and out and just, um, you know, you're needlessly using that mo motor. So right down here inside the door, there's a button that says it has a little red button on it. You want to go ahead, turn them off. Now, when I come out of the coach and shut the door, the steps are going to stay extended. So you'll notice the great carefree awning that runs along the side of the coach here. Now there's a control for right inside the door, which I'll show you when we go inside, but you can also download the app to your phone. So you can literally just go to the app and then you're gonna hit the extend button. So we've got it all the way extended. It is a little bit of a windy day, so there is a wind sensor on that, so you just always, whenever you're using your awning, make sure you're outside by your coach. I never leave my awning out if I'm not home just because I know a big gust of wind can come along and give it a surprise sometimes and, and really do some damage. Okay, then you can turn on your light right here. 
And then another cool thing on this app, if you go to your settings, now you can control the motion sensitivity. So I can have it uh, more motion sensitivity or less. So if I want that to come in easily, I'm going to put that up really high so that it will come in sooner when it starts to the wind starts to blow. And I'm also going to tell you another trick. Some of you may have a, a view or you may have just gotten a view or an Avion and um, someone failed to teach you how to uh, connect your app to your awning. It's super easy. All you have to do is take out, extend the awning just a little bit, then bring it all the way back in, then hold the in button for three seconds. Then you're going to go here and it will say rescan. Just rescan it and it should pick up the awning um, app just that easily. So um, super easy to use and really handy to have when you're sitting outside and you need some extra shade. Um, obviously if you don't have your phone or if you don't have the app, you can do it manually inside. Also notice the security light for the passenger side of the coach. Then we've got our nice big windows. You can also option in the dual pane windows. Um, this is the standard windows that we have here. And we've got our first compartment. So we have nice big compartment, 2000 watt inverter, two 110 outlets, your TV connection, and then you can push a cord through here and then you can tighten that up. So it's just merely the cord that's going through. That keeps critters from getting into your coach. Also down by this first bay is your engine exhaust. Let's talk a little bit about how Winnebago makes this wall. So they've got the fiberglass outer, then they do Asdil and then foam insulation. Those three layers are all glued, pressed together, and then put through a pinch roller. After it comes out of that, it's going to go to the CNC machine where it's going to cut out precisely where the wiring goes, the aluminum framing, and then they're going to put the steel backer on there for your cabinets. Then it's going to, they're going to add the interior wall. They're going to glue and press that and put it through the pinch roller again. So you have a really nice, sturdy, well insulated wall. Here's the exhaust for your furnace, which is a 20K BTU. And then we're going to go down here. We can see we've got our quick connect for our LP tank. And then I'm going to open this door. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that these doors are nice and sturdy. It's actually made of aluminum. Um, typically on your class C, you're going to get a fiberglass door. Um, and this has a nice, strong latch. You can lock it. Um, so just a little bit of an upgrade with the view Navion. Inside here we've got the Cummins Onan RV Quiet Diesel 3200 generator. Now this is an optional feature. If you don't go with the diesel generator then you'll get the 3600 LP generator. Above the generator we've got the Truma AquaGo. This is your uh, water heater. So this is a great little system. Uh, basically gives you continuous hot, hot water. Biggest thing that you need to know is that you have to make sure the system is turned on outside so that it will work inside. And you just push the button up or down um, to turn it on. Also, it's super easy to winterize. We can do that for you at National Indoor RV Centers if you need us to. Um, or you can follow the instructions on the manual yourself, but this just comes out, uh, releases all the pressure, and you can easily drain the tank and uh, winterize. Now, if we are lucky enough to have you as a storage customer at National Indoor RV Centers, you don't need to worry about winterizing your coach because it's always stored indoors. It's always plugged into 30 amp or 50 amp service, whatever your coach requires. And we have storage for over 300 coaches at each of our locations. So nice big compartment here. I like it because it's, you know, at eye level and nice compartment, fairly big. The one thing I did want to tell you too is look at the label that's on the door. So this is super important. You never want to take those off. You're going to have them on your upholstery. You're going to have them on your doors. Um, if something were to happen to this door, if it would be damaged, all you have to do is take a picture of that label, send it to Winnebago, and they'll be able to order you a new door. So I love that feature. Marker light for the passenger side of the coach, and then another nice big storage compartment. You'll see right underneath this compartment, you've got the exhaust for your generator, and it's nice that they direct that towards the back of the coach so that if you're outside enjoying, you know, the nice outdoors with the awning out, that you're not smelling that um, exhaust from the generator. Here at the back of the view, we've got a great ladder, so if you want to go check your um, seals or if you need to look at your 
solar panels, clean those off, easy way that you can get up and down. You also have two 100 watt solar panels on the roof. So they always work better if you keep them clean. So the ladder is nice to have um, to be able to get, get up there and do that. You can also add um, more solar if you want, up to 450 is what the controller can take. Now, if you look at the very top of the view, you've got your marker lights, then right below that, you've got your center rear view camera. I also love that you get a rear window. So, you know, if you're um, backed into a beautiful campground and you're looking at the lake or at the ocean, I love that you have a window um, in the rear of the coach. Then we've got the view, Winnebago signage here, brake lights, and then we have our hitch, which I told you is rated for 5,000 pounds, and our seven way. And Winnebago also makes this hitch. Again, another thing that they make, they e-coat, super strong, durable, if you know Winnebago made it. As I come around the driver's side, our first compartment here has our 30 amp shore power cord and our wet bay. So I'm gonna just pull this out so you can see everything in this compartment. The nice thing is too, you can also thread this cord through this. So again, that you can keep that compartment secure when your cord is out. Then we have our RV transfer switch that's installed, which is really nice. If you look in the very back, we have our cable connections and our solar connection. So if we wanna add that portable solar panel, this is where we would connect it. Next to our shore power cord, we've got our wet bay. So very at the top, we've got our winterization valves. Again, something you don't need to worry about if you just come to National Indoor RV Centers, we'll take care of you. We've got our fresh, fresh water valve, our fresh water inlet, water pump, our shower, hot and cold. Got a nice little shower here. I love this because I wanna take my view to the beach. I want to be able to wash off my feet when I get back so I don't track that into my coach. Again, if you see the little pink fluid in here, that means that your coach has been winterized. We've got our gray uh, waste tank drain and our black waste tank drain. And then we've got our fresh um, tank drain, fresh water drain, and our fresh water drain here. So our, our low and high point um, drains for winterizing the coach. And again, I can take the thread, the, the hose when I hook up to the water and thread it through the base here. I really like that feature, just keeping my coach critter free. Then right underneath here is where we're gonna hook up our stinky slinky um, to dump our tanks. Marker light for the driver's side of the coach and the black waste tank flush inlet. Then we've just got a service panel here exhaust here. This is going to be for our potable water. So let's say that we're dry camping and we need to add water to the coach. Um, we're not going to be able to do it through the through the hose, through a city connection. This is where we would add it. This is also where we would add, um, if we wanted to sanitize the tank, we would do that there. We have another big storage compartment here. We've got the slide out room controllers just to the side. And then if you look at the very top of the compartment, um, it does have a pass-through area. So this is gonna be great for fishing poles, um, maybe it's paddles, you know, anything that's really long, you can put up there. So that's really nice that you have access to that area. Next compartment, we have our LP tank. So the LP tank is a 50 pound LP tank. And like I said, the quick connect is on the other side. The fill is here. Here's the reservoir for your hydraulic jacks. That is another optional feature on the View Navion. If you're new to the Mercedes chassis, you may be wondering where you fill this full of fuel. It's right inside the door. Just open up the door right here. This is your diesel fuel, and it's a 24 gallon diesel fuel tank. I love the outside of the view, but I can't wait to show you the inside. Really love this floor plan. Let's go check it out. Right when I walk in the door, we've got the EQ system. These are, these are the optional hydraulic jacks. So you can do it from this panel here, or you can do it from your phone. So I've downloaded the app, and I'm just gonna do it from my phone. So you're gonna hit the power button. So make sure your ignition is on and that you have engaged your park brake. Then you're gonna go ahead and hit auto level. So now I can hear the jacks coming down, um, and it's letting me know that it's operating right now. So it will just go through all the motions. When I get four solid lights, then we'll be level. 
so as you can see you know of course we're doing a video so it didn't work <laughs> but I wanted to level here but it's telling me that it's an excessive slope excessive slope so I don't have the um, the four solid lights the jacks did come down but it's not it's too much of a slope for it to level completely so I will move the coach and see if I can't get it to a spot where it can level easier um, now if you move the coach and then you get excessive slope warning again you may want to wait another 20 30 minutes before you try to level again just because you don't want to burn up that pump so just so you know i'll try it again but when i have four solid dots on four corners i'm level first button here is our exterior security light for the passenger side and a little courtesy light here when we walk in so it lights the stairwell and then the second light is for the living room down below the cabinet we have the complete coach disconnect here so this is what you want to turn off if you're not storing someplace that you are plugged in because you don't want to have any parasitic draw on your batteries this is where you can hit the bat the coach batteries on and off right here and then this is our step button on and off we have it in the off position right now our awnings out and in and our awning, awning light on and off and underneath the first step are our house batteries so we've optioned in the two lithionic batteries versus the AGM batteries so we get 130 amp hours per each battery so 260 amp hours so you can download the lithionics battery app to your phone and you can see its current state of charge voltage current power your battery temperature and the battery management system temperature and then the state which is on and you can see that little green dot that's flashing that's like the heartbeat of the unit you can also scroll over and then you can get more information um, from this page so that's really nice and it also tells you the time remaining so we have one day 15 hours as we're using the battery right now um, if I, I don't have the AC on because it's a beautiful, nice, cool day, so I don't have that on. Once I turn on that AC, that time remaining is going to change. Now, with the lithionic batteries, um, there's three ways to charge them. So the first way and the quickest way to charge your batteries is by driving the coach. And I believe they charge at 1% per mile. So if you drive 50 miles, you'll charge at 50%. Um, the second way is to actually plug in. So put, plug in your 30 amp power. And the third way is solar panel. Solar panel is gonna be like a trickle charge. Um, it'd be like trying to fill your swimming pool with a little teeny garden hose. Um, whereas driving is filling your swimming pool with that fire hydrant. Right as I walk in the coach, I've got the fire extinguisher. This is really nice. I've got it accessible from inside the coach and outside if I need it. Now, one of the things that I want um, you to go watch is my video on protein, our fire suppression system that we sell exclusively at National Indoor RV Centers. You can customize protein for your coach. So you can do it throughout the whole coach or you can do specific areas like the generator compartment, the engine compartment, um, where your fuse box is. Just call us at National Indoor RV Centers. We'll be happy to give you a customized quote for your coach. So welcome to the beautiful interior of the 24D. I just love this floor plan. I think it's beautiful. Look at all the space that you get. First of all, um, for a 25 foot, five inch coach, it feels really roomy and much bigger with that Murphy bed option. I also love the interior. So this is the walnut color wood with the white toppers, or you can go full walnut. And then the interior package is the Harmony package. There's also um, the Harmonious package that you can choose. So not too hard to remember those two, is it? Um, but I just love this floor plan. Lots of space in the walkway, nice big kitchen, eating area. Now this area, you can option in theater seating instead of the u-shape um, dinette with the u-shape dinette you are going to get a seat belt here and a seat belt here and i believe in the 24v as in victor floor plan you get three seat belts so you get one here here and here not sure why you don't get that third one with a d but there's always a reason so let's go ahead and start with the overhead bunk 
Now, I love the option as a bunk. Not only um, can you use it for extra storage, um, also another additional sleeping area. And you can see, on, I'll move the, the blinds in a second, but you have windows on each side. If you look at the very back of the bunk, you've got two 110 outlet, a 12 volt outlet, and two USB charging ports. And then you've got the reading light here that is directional. So you can press that, you get a nice soft light. And then if you press and hold, it goes to a bright reading light. And you can see how much that lights up the area. I really like the window. I'm not gonna undo it the whole way, but you can see that those blinds are super easy. They just snap up and then you can open it. So that's a huge bonus. Even if it's raining, you can get some fresh air in here and a cross breeze with by opening the other window on the other side and then just make sure you shut it nice and tight but this is a great area for the kids even for adults could sleep up here it will hold up to 500 pounds and the ladder to get on top will hold um, 250 pounds speaking of the ladder here's where it's stored just pop it right out of there and then you're just gonna flip it around and you see we've got the two little spots for right here and then you can just climb right up easy easy peasy to get up on here so I, I could definitely spend a night or two up here wouldn't be any problem another thing that's going to contribute to keeping this area nice and cool when you're sleeping is this fan so you can put you can open the windows for a little cross breeze you've got the fan that you can vent the area with as well, which is really nice. Now for the kids to really have a lot of fun up on this top bunk, they're gonna need a little privacy. <laughs> You'll hear all the giggles, I'm sure, still. But this is nice, so you can kind of shut them away. They can have their own little space. Or if you're using this as storage, um, you don't wanna see that. So you can just pull across the drape on each side and totally make that its own little space. Now this, you can also move it. If you know that you're not gonna have anyone sleeping up there or just during travel, if you want a little bit more headroom as you get up from the cab and say, go to get drinks, you can just push this up and flip it back. So it's totally other way and then that kind of opens up the cab area. Now I've turned the captain and the co-captain's chairs around and then I've added this extra pad that you get from Winnebago so that it, you can actually, you know, sit there comfortably. Notice also that we've got the label. Again, if something, if I were to accidentally leave this at a campground, or if it were able, to, if it got damaged, um, I can give them that information so they can order me a replacement. And then you can just comfortably sit here. So you can see that you can easily be here. You've got your other guests here, the TV, will rotate i'll show you that in a second so you can watch tv from the captain co-captain's chair or from this area so if i want to add the table here it's just this easy got my leg which are stored in the back and the tabletop just put that on top of there and then you can turn that so let me just give you my perfect scenario I'm in Zions National Park in Utah because I just think that park's gorgeous. I'm going to work from my coach all day and then I'm gonna go hiking tonight. But while I'm working from my coach, I've got my laptop here. I'm gonna open my front door. And I don't want all the bugs to come in. So, how cool is that? There's my screen door. So simple. So now I can sit back. Do my work here, enjoy the beautiful outdoors, have the windows open, get a nice cross breeze. It's perfect. Now there's lots of different ways that you can use this U-shaped dinette. First of all, obviously you can get a lot of people at it, which is really nice. The table again is going to rotate, so easy for people to get in or out. And then, of course I said we've got the seat belts, but say we were gonna use this as a lounge. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my footrest. And now I can just sit back, scoot back into place, watch TV, have a little snack. I love that. And then this will actually add to that bed space too if someone's sleeping. And then these are really easy to get down. 
So all you do is just reach under and you just kind of follow it back, push the lever and it pops right down. There's also a foot rest on the other side. So U-shaped dinette foot rest on both ends so they can use those kind of as a shea lounge on both sides. Then we can take this tabletop off. Um, it just loosens right here underneath and then you can pull it right off. Super easy. I'm gonna go ahead and just set it up top bunk here. And I'm gonna move the leg and that just unscrews off. Now you can see all the storage that we have underneath these booths. So tons of storage there. And there's more. And, and more. So lots of storage space. So now before I make this into a bed, I just want to point out that you've got the two 110 outlets underneath the booth so you can use those for charging. I'm going to bring our tabletop back. Now I'm just going to set it into place here. Now we have our base. Go ahead and take our side here. Push that right in. And our other side. And you've got your bed. I also wanted to point out that we have a child tether for a car seat. So I've got the window open because it's, like I said, beautiful day. I've got a nice cross breeze going across the coach. And then I've got my day shades. If it's a little sunny, I can pull that down. And my MCD night shades lock out the space super easy. I've got my push button lights on both sides. And then I have my 12 volt receptacle and two USB charging ports. Then right above, check out all that storage. So you're just gonna push this button in and then you can open your storage. Nice big space here. Remember that any cabinet that's on the wall is backed into steel. So they're super sturdy. We've got our Winnebago Bibles in here, all of our information. And then we just shut them and then you just lock them. Now, this is gonna be a drape so that you can have a privacy when you make your um, take your Murphy bed down, then this will just hook into the ceiling here and across here to give you some privacy in the bedroom. So now to this gorgeous kitchen. Look how big this kitchen is in the Class C. Like a lot of prep space, your induction cooktop, your gas cooktop, uh, Corian counters. We've got the double bowl sink with the sink covers. You know I love my sink covers because then I can hide um, some of my dirty dishes. <laughs> so look at those, really two nice size double bowl stainless steel with a residential faucet. I love that. And then we've got the lights, two 110 outlets, and then more lighting. And we've got the protective glass since it's um, the cooktop is below that. Now check out the storage that we have. Nice big cabinet. And those cabinets just stay open so they're not going to come down and hit your head. Then we have the 32 inch Insignia TV with the sound bar. And this opens from the side. So just unpop that. Now you can direct that TV towards the captain's chairs, co captain's chairs, your overhead bunk, or towards everyone that's sitting here in either the theater seats or the U dinette. Now behind this, we have a couple of things that I love. This is probably my favorite thing. This is where you hang your um, paper towels. I love it. You don't have to have them on the counter, but they're really easy to get to. There's one available 110 outlet back here, little storage compartment. Then we have our Blu-ray DVD player. Above that, more storage, our roof access port, 12 volt and two USB charging ports, HDMI input and cable input. Now I mentioned Winnebago is an RV manufacturer. Another thing they make is the TV mount. So when I close this, it's nice and solid. It's not gonna squeak or rattle or come unhinged in transport. Um, another manufacturer that we've um, carried for a while or that we did carry for a while, it took them two years to fix a TV that was similarly mounted like this that every time a coach arrived, the TV was on the bed. 
um, it just wasn't strong enough. You don't have that problem with Winnebago. Their hinges are nice and strong and solid and that's gonna stay right where it's supposed to, which I love. So back to the beautiful kitchen counter. Still can't get over the amount of space I get here. And then let's go over these buttons. So this is our courtesy light and a kind of a accent light. So it's underneath the cabinets and you can see it a light up in the bathroom as well. Then we have our fan. We can turn it on right there. So we want to air out the kitchen if we're cooking. And then we have the light switch for the lights below the cabinet. So look at the storage. This is a huge drawer. And not only that, we have more than one of them. We have two of them. We have three of them. And we're not done. We have a fourth. That is a lot of space. So if you think about just the space here plus the space underneath the booth, lots of storage. Here we have the convection microwave oven. Um, don't be afraid to bake in these. My specialty is cookies, but I have a customer that makes a loaf of bread like every other day for she and her husband in that convection um, microwave oven. I walked her to her coach and she had this beautiful loaf of bread and I was like, you made it in there? So, you know, they really do a great job. And then, last but not least, check out the storage that we have below our sink. That is so much storage. I love that they've given us a rack here. We have a place for a garbage can. So then you just can close them up. Now, while you're at the campground, you probably just wanna keep those little buttons out so you can easily get in and out, especially if your garbage is inside there. But when you're in travel mode, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and lock them. That brings me to another thing. You always wanna have a pre-trip travel checklist. Um, if you want to see mine, you can email me at Angie at nirvc.com. I also do a whole series on um, starting a trip, preparing for a trip, going on the trip, hooking everything up, unhooking everything. Um, so it's my RV in 101 series. Make sure you go and check that out. So now we're into the refrigerator freezer. Look how big that is, like a real size freezer. I love that. And the refrigerator. Look how nice and big that is. We even have the vegetable keepers. Lots of space here. Holds a Yeti. Gallon of milk or water. I really like that. And it is the Norcold refrigerator. Just to the side of the refrigerator, we've got, you could basically make this your pantry or you can use this as your wardrobe area because we are technically kind of across from the bedroom. Um, space up here, space below, plus another big cabinet here and then we've got our breaker box and our fuses and then behind this panel you have your winterization valve three and winterization valve one then we have another nice big cabinet next to the tv so huge storage space here and then we've got some important buttons here so this is where we would turn on our tank um, holding tank heater on and off and then this is how we start our um, Onan generator so on and off here and this is where we would turn our inverter on and off so this is the slide room control now for the slide room to work you have to do a couple things first thing and foremost you always want to make sure nothing's in the way of your slide um, secondly you need to have your engine on and park brake engaged or the slide will not work. You'll just push that button and nothing will happen. So then we have the one place. So we have our water pump. You can turn it on and off here. You can check your tank levels. Fresh water tank and gray and black tanks, they're all empty and our battery levels. So you can check that there. You can also check that on your app. Then we have our solar charge controller, which is gonna tell us what amps we have coming in from our solar panels. Our one place is where you can turn on your water pump right here, your tank levels, it will give you your reading. So fresh water tank is empty, uh, LP is empty, gray waste tank is empty, and your black tank is empty. Now on this coach, your fresh water tank is 30 gallons, your gray and your black are both 41. And then we can check our battery level as well. So now to our sofa and Murphy bed. So we're gonna have the sofa, I'm showing it now. We've got two 110 outlets and two USB charging ports on each side of the sofa. And then you just buckle the top cushion into the Murphy bed and you can keep that on when you bring that Murphy bed down. The button 
It is a power Murphy bed, which is really nice. And the button for that is just around the corner. So in the shower room, you can just bring that down. Here's your bed. I've kept the plastic on for the next guest so that they will feel like they've got a brand new bed. You can see the slats and there is a little bit of storage space underneath those slats if you wanted to slide something in there. Then all you do with this top cushion is just fill it, fill it in with a space right here. And you can see you've got a really nice bed. I, I love this feature. I love the option of having the extra space and then just putting the bed up. You don't even have to make your bed in the morning. That's my favorite part. You just throw it up. <laughs> so let me show you a few other features. We've got a window here, it's nice. And we also have the blackout shade, MCD. Then we've got our reading lights and they're gonna work the same as the one overhead. So we've got the little dim light and then hold it for the bright light and direct that light wherever you need it. And storage above nice storage above on both sides of the bed so that gives you an extra place for clothing whatever you need just when you think you've seen all the storage in this coach check out that underneath the bed so awesome another big storage compartment um, inside the murphy bed so i've got the privacy drape up it was super easy you can see that you just hook it into the ceiling and it's two separate curtains, so you can, you know, get out if you need to at night to run to the bathroom or for whatever. But it is just a nice option, so you feel like you have a little privacy if you have guests staying with you, um, that you've got your own little space. And the nice thing about this is that your guests can still have a walkway to the bathroom, um, and you still have your privacy during the middle of the night. I put the bed back up, and now I just wanted to point out that we have the propane alarm right here. And then straight above, we've got the carbon monoxide alarm. And back by the bunk room, we have the smoke alarm along with the fire extinguisher. So four safety um, features, again, so that when you're living in this coach, you are safe and that you can keep continue RVing even longer. Here is the thermostat for the AC and heat. So you can just scroll through the different options electric heat, gas heat, fan high, fan low, and then you'll just get to off. And then you adjust the temperature right here. We've got the light for the bedroom right there. All right, so now we're into the bathroom for the view. Now, the first thing we can do, just wanted to show you how easy it is to shut that door. So you've got nice privacy, and I love that we got the white door with that walnut, walnut white combo really nice and check out the storage so another big compartment for storage so very deep you've got a nice long hanger here and then it goes far back now the other cool thing is I can lift the bottom of this cabinet and then you can get into the storage and access from outside as well also right inside this wardrobe there's a spot here for the table leg that I put between the two captains and co-captains chairs and that table top fits right here and just straps in so that it's not gonna rattle while you're in transit. We're here in the bathroom. We can turn on the water pump just above the faucet. And then we have our Truma AquaGo control. So basically it's in the center. You really don't need to go down, you only go up. The down button is for winterizing your coach and then the bottom button is a cleaning cycle. Um, basically, if you put it into the clean cycle, you've got about 30 seconds to get it back up before it will go into the clean cycle and then it's going to run for about eight hours. So you don't want to mess with that. So you can turn it to um, the regular water heater mode or the eco mode. So just that simple. And then right above that, we've got our little Winnipeg Flying W hook, which I love. Medicine cabinet always nice to have that extra space above little different compartments and then we've got our faucet a little countertop space stainless steel sink nice storage here and room for a waste basket you know always key and then just outside that cabinet we've got the two 110 outlets the toilet paper holder and our uh, furnace 
I know it's in the bathroom, but I love to have the window because if I'm in a beautiful park, I want that window open as much as I can. And then if we need to, we can shut the blinds. We have the pedal control toilet. We've got our nice shower. I want to stand in it. So I've got my heels on. I'm 5'5", five five, so a little taller with my heels. If we're not going to use it as a shower, we can hang our clothes in here if we want to wash them in the sink, hang them to dry out here if we want to wash them outside. Then we've got the skylight here, which is nice too. It gives us some extra height. We've got the shower head. This is the oxygenic shower head, so it's gonna conserve water, but still give you nice pressure. And then you can turn it on and off while you're using it. So you can lather up, turn off the water while you're doing that, and then turn it back on right here from the control there. And then you've got the dial control. But really a nice amount of space here, little shelves for your shampoo and to shave your legs. So great, and then I also love, I know a lot of people say it seems a little flimsy, but it works, so that's really all that matters, right? And privacy, and then it kind of washes off the water as it goes back in, mildew resistant, works really well. Hook for your towel, so important, and then the light switch for the bathroom. And then we have a fan for the bathroom. This is the control just outside the shower for the Murphy bed. I always like to show the coach with the slides in. So this is the 24D as in dog with the slides in. You can see that you can easily get through to your bathroom um, with the slides in during travel. So if you need to pull over the side of the road to use bathroom and you have a great aisle way all the way to the back of the coach. So here we are in the cockpit of the view. Um, first of all, the seats that you get with the uh, Mercedes Sprinter chassis are super comfortable. You can also upgrade to have them covered um, in a lighter material so they can sort of coordinate with your interior if you want. Um, we just stayed with the standard here. And the really wonderful thing about these is that they are powered and have memory settings. So favorite thing, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Before we get there, I wanna let you know that you've got the lumbar support, four-way lumbar support, so you can totally customize to make that work for you. And then just below that, we've got our fuse box. And then in the center of my seat here, you see this little lever? When I push that, I can then rotate my captain's chair into the living room and then just lock it back into place. Now let me show you how you're, we're going to do that memory setting on the chair. So here are your controls for the seat. So your backrest, backwards, and then forward, and then you can move the seat forward or backward. And down and up, and down and up. So really nice. You can get it just perfectly how you want it. Once you've got it just where you want it, you're going to hit the, the M and then the number. And you'll hear a little beep. Now it's set. So what I would do, I mean, typically you're going to have two drivers. So I'm driver one, so I'm going to set M1 for myself. I'll do M2 for my co-pilot. And then M3, I'm going to get the seat set just perfect so when I hit three, that it's in the position for it to be turned around into the family room. Because uh, it's just one of my little pet peeves is trying to figure out you up and back and trying to get it just to the right position so that you can swirl the chair. If you make it the memory three, it's easy peasy. So you can do that on both the captain's chair and the co-captain's chair. And another favorite button of mine, heated seats. Um, my husband and I are never on the same um, wavelength as far as temperature goes, so at least if he's got the AC blast and I can have my heat going. <laughs> then we've got the unlock and lock. Just above that, we've got our window controls, and then we have controls for our exterior mirrors. This is just gonna help us pull the door shut and a nice armrest. And then below that, we've got some storage area, another drink holder, and more storage below. Right below my feet, you can see is where the chassis battery is stored. And then we've got the lever here to pop the hood open. So these are our light controls. We can have our day running lights, just our auto lights, or you can just turn your headlights on. Then we have our fog lights, and this is our um, just one bright light in the back of the vehicle. Um, if you were to need some help and didn't want to put on your hazards, you could turn this on so you would have a light to alarm people. This is going to be the dim and brightness of your dash settings. 
the center column here is where we can adjust the steering column up and down. I kind of like it to sit in my lap, so I'll probably just keep it right there. So here we have our windshield wiper controls. You can keep it in this setting right here and it's just an auto, so it will come on automatically if it senses rain. Or you can turn it on if you want immediate reaction. And then look at the cool uh, water inside of the windshield wipers. And remember that conserves wiper fluid by 25%, so I think that's super cool. So then I just turn it back, turn them off, and then we can, this is obviously our turn signal, up and down, and then we can flash our lights. Then you have the manual shifting paddles, so down and then up. These buttons control the screen ahead of us. So I can go to my home button and I can scroll through all the information. So you can scroll to service, click into that, and then scroll down. You're gonna have your DEF reading here. Assist plus, you need service in 352 days. Engine oil level, it will give you that reading once you're um, using the coach. And then particular filter, so it lets you know how full that is. So then we just go back to our home button. We can scroll over to drive assist. I'll show you a little bit more about that. This will really be active when we're driving. Trip information. And so you can scroll through the different information there. Your miles. Your current consumption. And then it, this is kind of your driving habits. Your constant driving habits, your coasting, and your acceleration. nav button, your radio controls, media controls, you can Bluetooth your phone here, and then your settings. This is important, your vehicle button. So this is where we can set the sensitivity of the rain sensor on our windshield wipers to low or standard and display. So this is where you can see your DEF I'm going to click into this because I want to have that permanently up here on the screen and click into it and then go back. So it's going to stay there at the bottom of my screen. This is our cruise control button, so I'll hit that and then I can set the speed. Once I've set it, I can go up and down and resume and cancel. Also when I'm in cruise control, I can set the following distance of the car in front of me. So again, this will be active when I'm actually driving our Mercedes horn, and then we go over to this, um, these buttons here. Now I'm gonna control all of those same functions I kinda walked you through on the dash, I can do here on the MBUX screen. So I'll walk you through navigation, radio, media, everything's at your fingertips. This is also a touch screen, so I'll go over that with you in just a second. Now you can answer the phone and hang up the phone, turn the volume up and down on the radio, set a favorites button. So it'll bring up your favorites over here. And then you can also do voice command. So you can Apple CarPlay in, Android Auto, and then ask Siri questions all through voice command, which is great because your hands really never need to leave the steering wheel. Just behind that, we've got the lever here for our transmission, reverse, neutral, and drive. So to get into those, you're gonna put your foot on the brake and then hit it up for reverse, foot on the brake, down for drive, foot on the brake, and in for park. Down here, we have the alert for our stabilizers or for our jacks. If they are down, we're gonna get a uh, red alert here and also an audible alert from here which we can turn that alert up or down for example i've got my jacks down right now so i'm going to go ahead and turn on the coach you can see i've got an audible alarm plus a red alert so now i'm going to go ahead and pull up my app i'm going to power the system and auto and retract all you can hear the jacks coming up and you can feel the coach lowering. All right, you can see that we've got four solid check marks and all the alarms are off 
and we are all ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and power down my app. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you, we've got a keyless start. So if I wanna go into ignition mode, I'm just gonna hit the button all by itself. We'll go into ignition mode. Once I wanna start it, I'm gonna put my foot on the brake, push the button, start the coach. Now, if these aren't in close enough proximity to this, it won't work. So if for some reason it's not getting the signal, just get them closer. I usually kind of keep them right here in this cup holder. And then when I wanna stop the engine, I just put my foot on the brake, push the button again, and now it's off. All right, so now let's go over the MBUX system here. And again, this is touch screen. So I can just scroll through everything. Now, if I like that settings button and I wanna move it to the very front of my screen, I just keep holding it over here, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. And now it's gonna be first thing that I go to when I get to my screen. So now let's go to our settings. So in our settings, we've got our quick access button. This is gonna allow you to turn on your active lane keeping, turning it on or off. I of course want that on. Then we'll go to assistance and we've got our lane, um, active lane keeping assist, active brake assist. You can set how, um, if you want it medium, late or off or early. Medium, I'm gonna go with early and we'll go back. So go attention assist. So these are all the safety features that are built into this. You want it sensitive or standard. Let's go sensitive, back. Let's go to our vehicle settings. So we can set our door locks, um, gas station search, light, interior lighting delay, um, or exterior lighting delay, interior lighting delay. And go to our systems. So this is our display, our controls, you can scroll through these and sort of customize how you like it on your screen. So we'll go back to our home button, connect your phone, navigation, so our radio controls, click in here and you can scroll through those, your media info, so your engine, your consumption, operator's manual, and then applicable car apps, and then you can add them there as well. Now, just below the screen, we've got our camera control, quick nav button, telephone, and our radio and media. Our volume control here, this will take us back to our home page. This will mute our system. This is that quick access button. And then this is the scroll, the seek and find on our radio. Here are our heat and um, AC controls, auto, AC, direction of the airflow, our hazards, our max defrost, and then our circulating air within the coach, and our fan speed up and down. Just below that, we've got our cup holders. So we have big one and small one, so four cup holders here. And then we have two USB inputs and one 12 volt input. Just below those, we've got an insert here for your key fob. If for some reason it's not responding, it's not being found when you try to start your coach, you can push it right in here and reset the key fob. Up above the dash, we've got a little pocket here for miscellaneous items, plus two cup holders. And then we have the same above the um, passenger seat, two cup holders, and space there for storage. Then in the center compartment here, we've got a 12 volt outlet. Here's the USB-C input. Now this is where we can plug in our phone so that we can use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You can do it through your cord, your USB-C cord, or you can connect wirelessly. These are USB-C charging ports, and you also have a wireless charger right there. You can lay your phone and charge your phone. Here in the passenger seat, I have a nice big compartment for miscellaneous items. And then right below these tabs, we've got the toolbox, circuit breakers here. And then in this compartment right here, we have the jack. So we have our rear view mirror just above that. We've got a compartment for our sunglasses, SOS button in case we're in a collision, button for if we um, need help or roadside assistance 
Then we have the reading light for the driver's side, passenger side. Uh, we can turn the light on or off for when the doors are open in the rest of the van. And then we have the dome light here for extra lighting. Then we've got our sun visor on both sides and a nice compartment for storage. You know, I'm old school. I like to carry an atlas so I can always see where I am just in case I lose that connectivity and I don't have my navigation system up. I always like to look at a map. I think that comes from my mom. So great spot for that right there. All right, so I've got the blackout shades. I wanted to just show you how easy they are to put up. I just unfolded them and then just set them in the window. I'm gonna just bring it up. This will go around the rear view mirror and then I'll bring my sun shades down to hold them in place. So push that up and then Velcro them together. Push it up into the window and just kind of situate it so that you've got full coverage. And then on your side windows, there's a little hint. You've got a D for driver side and a P for passenger side. And I usually open the door just a little because there are magnets in here that will help hold that in place. And then once I kind of get it in place, I like to shut the door on it. So it's really nice and secure. And it's as easy as that to black out the front cap. All right, so we're finally out in the test drive in the view. Again, I just love this coach. First of all, it's so easy to drive. If you've ever driven a truck before, it doesn't feel any bigger. Um, you've got the great mirrors on both sides. Um, when you're backing up, you've got your cameras. Um, it's just really nice. And then you have all the safety features that are built in. So you just, it's a, it's a dream to drive. I typically like to um, get up to speed and then I usually set my cruise control. So I'm gonna get up to 55 here. I'm gonna set my cruise control and turn it on. And then now I'm just going to sit back, relax, enjoy the drive. Um, I do have the active brake assist, so if a car gets in front of me, it will start to slow down. Um, and then I can change the following distance here while I'm driving. Um, I don't have anyone in front of me right now, which is great. It's even more fun. Um, and now it's just a smooth drive, easy to drive. So one of the safety features is active lane assist. So I'm just going to demonstrate this a little bit. I'm going to start to veer over the center lane. And as I do that, I get a, um, a vibration in the steering column, plus get a flashing red light to let me know that I'm veering off out of my lane. This also has the drowsy driver alert. So if I am veering out of my lane too often, like I probably I've been doing to kind of give you an example, of the safety features, it will let, it will start giving me a message to get a cup of, co get a cup of coffee or pull over um, and rest up so that I'm safely driving my coach. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I always do the decibel reader. I want you to know how quiet this coach is. So 63.6 and super quiet. So you could be having a conversation with your um, co-captain here. You can talking with the folks in the back they would easily be able to hear you now the only way for you to know exactly what you want is to come to national and rv centers and um, drive one of our coaches we are happy to let you test drive we really want to make sure you get the right coach the first time um, and so we, that's what we're there for we're there to share the knowledge that we have about each product and make sure that you're happy with your purchase one of the things when you come for delivery at National Indoor RV Centers, we like you to plan to stay a night or two with us. We think it's really important that you spend some time living in your coach. We do a thorough PDI, but you know, we just check things one time. So we want you to come, learn about the coach, and then stay in the coach, push all the buttons, get familiar with it, because that really gives our customer the best experience once they leave National Indoor RV Centers if they feel comfortable with their coach. And so that's what it's all about. We want you on the road, having fun. We have an AIM club, all-inclusive motorhome club. All you need is a coach with a motor. You're an automatic member. We pay your first, first year's dues when you purchase with us. And then we hold rallies across the country, sort of like a cruise in your coach. And so we'd love to have you come and join us at that. We like to get to know our customers. We want customers for life. And when we say that, we mean that. So don't delay, come and see us today. Um, go to the website, nirbc.com, pick up your phone, and remember, 
I do these videos because I want you to learn a lot, but I want you to call National Indoor RV Centers. I promise we will take better care of you than anyone else out there. Thank you so much for joining me today on my walkthrough of the 2023 Winnebago View slash Navion. Now I'm sure you're wondering how much this gorgeous coach would cost you. Well, current MSRP is $221,864. If you want to find out what I can sell it to you for, please give us a call at National Indoor RV Centers. We have RV lifestyle specialists that are ready and waiting to help you. Believe me, we want to make the buying process enjoyable. Um, it should be easy, it should be fun. This is a recreational vehicle and you should have a great time buying it. We want you to come by for a test drive. We try to make the buying process very easy. We take in trades, we do consignments, and we do financing. Do you know that you can finance an RV for 20 years? Yep. We also sell extended service plans. So basically, we do it all. We can store your coach, we can service your coach, we can even repair your coach if you get into a little collision, which we hope that doesn't happen. Now, just remember, with our volume and economies of scale, RVs simply cost less at National Indoor RV Centers. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more just like it, please hit the like and subscribe. Make sure you go and check out my Winnebago factory tour video, my RV in 101 series, and our paint and body collision repair series. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day.